Pozdrav Humana Ona izred ambasade Republike Kipra. Produced by Hona TV. Today we are at the Embassy of Republic of Cyprus. And today's guest, and at the same time our host, is His Excellency Mr. Konstantinos Eliades. Thank you very much for being our guest. Thank you for hosting me. Cyprus is all about the island's rich cultural history and beautiful beaches, but it's also a home to Mediterranean forests, beautiful mountains, monasteries, archaeological museums and Roman monuments. But also each of the island's six large cities has its own nightlife and each of one is worth checking out. The food is amazing, halloumi cheese is a delicacy, the booze is incredible too. The national drink is also known as Brandy Sour, and if you're a fancy wine, Cyprus is home to the world's oldest wine. You can see the whole island in one trip. Nowhere on the island is more than three hours away from anyone else. Cyprus is very safe, is considered extremely friendly, and one of the safest destinations in all of the Europe. Cyprus is a birthplace of goddess of love, Aphrodite. During the goddess day, her chief temple was located in Papos. Your Excellency, you studied uh, economy and then uh, you finished uh, master's in tourism economy. Uh, when was the idea born that you want to be a diplomat? How that connection happened? Well, um, after I finished my studies uh, and I went to Cyprus, I found a job in a bank. And I was working in a bank for six years. Uh, but I always had an interest for uh, public things for politics uh, and what's happening in the world. And at some point I was a bit frustrated or, or after five years of university studies to just be a bank teller. Yes. So when uh, openings were uh, announced uh, for the diplomatic corps in, uh, by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I applied and I went through the necessary exams and I, I succeeded, so I was, uh, that's how it came. I, uh, I always had uh, an interest in public things, politics, uh, and economics have, are always closely linked with, uh, with politics. Yes, of course, of yeah. course. Uh, you, your first posting. Mm -hmm was in a quite uh, hard time. Mm -hmm. You were here in Serbia, yes. that was in 1990s, very hard period yeah. for our country. And I suppose for you, that was uh, your first experience in diplomacy. How yes. do you feel then? Yes, it's true. Um, Belgrade in what was then uh, Yugoslavia was my first posting as a young diplomat. I was the number two in our embassy here. And yes, as you said, it, uh, it happened. Uh, I stayed here for three years for, until 1993, during very tragic times for, uh, for, for the country and all the peoples uh, in the area. But, uh, and we, uh, of course, being diplomats, who are not affected by the hardship as much as uh, the local population, but still, uh, sanctions, uh, shortages in, uh, in medicines, in food, and everything um, affected us as well. Uh, but uh, coming from a country like Cyprus, where we have a deep-rooted friendship uh, and understanding between our two people, Serbs and Cypriots, made things a bit easier. And also, 
because we as diplomats, all diplomats here, uh, face the same difficulties and the same hardships. That created an increased bonding between ourselves and uh, increased solidarity. So all in all, uh, I had, uh, despite the tragic moments and, uh, and the difficulties of, of, of those three years, all in all, I, uh, I, had, uh, I cannot say that I, it was a bad experience. It was a bad experience for the people, for the country, but for a diplomat and also as a human being, it was, um, uh, it was quite enriching. Then 25 years after, you come again to Serbia, uh, this time with more peaceful Serbia, and this time as ambassador. How did you feel when they told you after 25 years that you're coming again here? Well, to be honest, uh, before coming to Belgrade, I, I had asked for the post. I, uh, I had asked my uh, political superiors that uh, there was an opening and that I would be interested uh, to, to come to Belgrade. And I was, I was very satisfied when the then Minister of Foreign Affairs granted my wish my, and uh, he appointed me as uh, ambassador here. Because um, as I told you, having already served here, I really loved Serbia. I still love Serbia and the Serbian people. So um, I was very glad to come here and I was also very pleasantly surprised to see how big a difference there was between how Serbia is today and how things were 25 years ago the big progress, the big changes that have taken place. And um, I'm really very glad to, 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 to be here for a second time, uh, and this time as, uh, as the head of mission. Uh, you are here already four and a half years? Yes. Right? And you speak French, uh, German? No, no, French, no? English and English Greek. English and uh, a bit of Russian, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How is your Serbian language going? Well, my Russian uh, has, most of it has gone away. Moi Serbski mislim da nije loše. Od kada sam došao ovdje, potrudio sam se da naučim Serbski. Za mene to je znak poštovanje i za zemlja i za Serbski narod. Ali ipak još uvijek imam dosta da naučim. Osjećate se sigurnije ako pričate na engleskom, ali odlično zvuči. Hvala, hvala. You once said that you never felt like a stranger here. Is that not only because our two countries' friendship, I think that our people have a lot of similarities. Absolutely. You know, when as a Cypriot in Serbia, even if I don't say that I'm the ambassador, Whenever I meet uh, people here and I tell them that I'm a Cypriot, it's immediately you see this spontaneous fraternity and genuine love for Cyprus. And uh, what they uh, often tell me, Mismo <laughs> uh, and, um, and I really feel like that. I feel that I'm welcome everywhere, uh, that there is genuine friendship and respect also for us people, but also as countries. Great, great. That is very nice to hear. We also hear a lot, uh, that, uh, a lot of that good experience uh, also when Serbs uh, yeah. go to, to Cyprus. Uh, is it a bigger trend uh, of uh, Serbians visit Cyprus or Cypriots to, to Serbia? Well, you know, uh, uh, the list, uh, I don't have the, f the most recent figures, I have the figures from 2018. Uh, so in that year, around 9,700 Serbs visited Cyprus and around 9,300 Cypriots came to Serbia. Given our uh, very deep-rooted friendship and genuine friendship and uh, bilateral relations, because Serbia and Cyprus are two countries that have no open issues, we have no difficulties in our relations, we have no, nothing that hinders our relations. Uh, these numbers could be much more higher. And um, since my arrival in Serbia, I have tried to, to promote uh, and to, let's say, improve this flow 
both, both ways. Yeah, both ways. Um, and we are still trying, but uh, you know, yeah, in, at, uh, at the end, it's up to people to decide where they take their holidays. So uh, it's. Uh, but uh, we we would like to see more people both ways. Do you might think that maybe uh, some kind of cultural exchange project between young people, students, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. would be worthwhile to uh, to. Um, let's say, use their uh, personal experience mm -hmm. as uh, maybe marketing promotion? Well, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, we, uh, culture is one of the, uh, of the cultural diplomacy. It's one, it's very important for us and it's one of our goals as diplomats here. And we try within our means and possibilities to promote that. And um, I have uh, visited several schools here and we have managed with a particular school in Batsk Petrovac. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, who had exchange of students, uh, students from uh, <coughs> high school in Batsk Petrovac visited Cyprus together with their professors. And the same thing happened from Cyprus. Uh, here. That's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. They had a very, uh, it was, uh, the feedback was very uh, positive. And then there was also uh, some uh, from other school in Limassol who came, uh, had, uh, are in connection with the school in Zemun. And uh, we try to promote that. We also try to give as many uh, scholarships as possible for, Cypri uh, for Serbian students to mm -hmm. study in Cyprus. Uh, uh, higher education uh, institutions and uh, also Serbia offers a number of uh, scholarships for Cypriots. So we try our best uh, within our possibilities to, to do uh, and increase this cultural and not only interaction. Yeah, yeah, great, great. <laughs> what, is the bet what is the better than personal experience, absolutely. especially from young people? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That stays for whole life. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Um, uh, what uh, are the virtues and skills that a diplomat should possess if uh, some uh, young uh, persons ask you that they would like to follow your footsteps? You know, a diplomat has to be diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, there is not one definition fits all. Uh, I think uh, the most important thing is, first of all, to be a good listener because uh, mm -hmm. negotiating and uh, getting through your, uh, getting across your positions and your arguments, it's, uh, it's a very important part of what we do uh, in our uh, jobs. So, uh, and also be persuasive and then uh, of course, to be courteous and not uh, be arrogant towards uh, the people or the officials where you serve. And then um, managing when you are in a country, whatever country is that, to get the feeling of, of those people, of the people, of the officials on, on issues of importance to them and not, not be uh, in your contacts, uh, not to be seen as lecturing or uh, or being uh, demeaning. Uh, so it's uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of things together, um, and uh, as I said, there is no one size fits all. Uh, it's uh, diplomat. A diplomat represents his or her country. So. Uh, Whatever he or she does, good or bad, reflects on, yes. on so their country. So yes, of course. Yes. So one has to be very, uh, very uh, careful of, of what one says and does, and um, to to always have in mind that they represent the country, not just themselves. Of course, of course, yes. Uh, were there moments in your life uh, when it was difficult, when you might have thought to to quit? Well, to quit, no, but I, there were moments that I was, I doubted whether I would be up to the task of what was requested of me, especially in the early stages of uh, when I joined the ministry, uh, when you see uh, the volume 
uh, of uh, of the work that was uh, that is requested of you, and that you have to come up with papers and suggestions for your political superiors upon which the uh, policy made decisions and uh, important decisions uh, have to be taken and you realize the burden on your shoulders. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you, you wonder uh, whether you will be able to, to, to be worthy of this trust and of this task. But uh, that was just a short uh, period and then I never looked back again. What, uh, in, that, in those moments, what uh, what you say to yourself? Well, first of all, uh, you said to yourself that it's something that you chose. Yeah. Freely, nobody forced you to do uh, to become right. a diplomat, and that uh, you have both the knowledge and the strength uh, to to accomplish what uh, you are requested to accomplish. And then, of course, uh, the uh, support from family is also very important. And uh, then, uh, once you feel self confident, start feeling self confident, and that you realize that. Uh, you were chosen amongst uh, uh, hundreds of other uh, candidates means something and that uh, you are capable and that you have to believe in yourself. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> um, would you share your philosophy of life or motto? Well, I would say carpe diem, <laughs> grasp the day and feel, uh, live life uh, fully because you never know what tomorrow will bring. Uh, so uh, that's my philosophy. You said that the family, of, that is very important to, to have a support of family and friends. Sometimes happen that the family don't understand you well and then maybe they can slow you down. Uh, do you think that it should follow their dreams? I think yes, uh, but of course, uh, you know, um, our profession involves that every four or five years we have to travel to, from one country to another with everything that that involves. I mean, in terms of uh, every time having to adjust, uh, children to school, uh, leaving their friends behind and having to make others and everything. Um, spouses have to leave their careers, uh, their jobs. So it's, it's not something easy on the family yes. so it's mm -hmm. things that have to be to be discussed and uh, uh, and uh, a lot of soft understanding. Uh, of understanding of course but at the end of the day it's uh, you have to set your targets and then um, achieve them uh, the way you feel uh, you can uh, in addition to all your commitments, mm -hmm. do you, how do you uh, spend your free times? Do you have some hobbies? Yeah, well, I play tennis and I also do model making like this, yes. uh, this uh, little boat here. So, um, is, that your, is that this your Well, work? this specifically is not my not? work, okay. but I do similar things. Uh, I've been doing it since I was at school and uh, it's something that I love. So I said uh, tennis, uh, model making, and uh, uh, swimming, I go to the pool when I have some time. And recently I bought a bike, so I tend to, oh, nice. to exercise uh, <laughs> biking. Well, it's quite a, uh, an experience here in Belgrade uh, with, um, with the hills. Yeah, <laughs> For I biking. know, I know. It's a challenging subject. It's extremes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But uh, for the model, model making, mm -hmm. uh, does you need a lot of patience? Yeah, absolutely. It's quite uh, delicate. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. To finish a model, you need at least six months, uh, oh. and uh, even longer, depending on the on the model, if it's plastic, if it's wood. But yeah, it takes a lot of patience. Oh. Without patience, <laughs> you should not even think about it. Yes. <laughs> Are you making it for your own collection? Or for presents? Uh, well, I make it because it's something that I like and I don't uh, sell them or anything. I just, uh, if, some, if some friends ask me, I give them away as presents. Mm -hmm. 
And I plan at some point, uh, when I go back to Cyprus, to maybe have an exhibition of, uh, of my models. But it's, uh, I'm, I don't do them uh, having in mind to sell them. Mm -hmm. I, just, I either keep them for me and my friends to admire them when they visit, or I give them as presents. Uh, I will ask one more question. Uh, what is the biggest model that you, that you made? Well, it's a model, it's a wooden model that I made. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in Cyprus. Uh, I started it, it took me, okay, it's still unfinished, but mm -hmm. it's a model which measures more than one meter oh. uh, and one meter high. And uh, I, I finished all the infrastructure and now I need to start uh, putting the, the mast, etc. But that's a long project because a wooden, a wooden model takes at least a year mm -hmm. to finish, at least. Great. That is very interesting. Yeah. I, we hope that uh, one day when you will have exhibition in Cyprus, you will call us to see. Of course. Thank of course. you. <laughs> of course. Uh, do you have also opportunity, of course, uh, in your free time to, to travel around the Serbia and explore? Yes, of course. I've been to, uh, to many places in Serbia, both in Vojvodina, in the south, uh, southwest, uh, eastern Serbia. And I really, uh, I've been there both uh, officially and also privately. Mm -hmm. uh, I visited a few monasteries. Um, I often go to Zlatibor on holidays. I, I love Serbia. It's, uh, I think Serbia is uh, it's a very interesting country with very interesting uh, landscapes and monuments. Uh, so I, 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 I try as much as possible to, to visit as many places as I can. Great, great. Yeah. Well, what is it that you like the most, maybe? The people and the food. The people and the food. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite food? Uh, Prasitina Pichene. Prasitina Pichene? Yes. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> Odd Lutonese board. Odd yeah. yes. When you should describe uh, uh, Cyprus in just three to four words, mm -hmm. what would those words be? I would say the island of love with a rich culture uh, and history and very friendly people. Lovely, lovely. Then for every person to, to wish to go. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. What is it that the uh, uh, tourists should not miss when they go to Cyprus? Well, I suppose, first of all, uh, of course, we have great beaches and uh, very good uh, hotels, but also they should not miss on gastronomy to taste uh, local gastronomy. And then there are a lot of uh, uh, there are museums to visit. There are a lot of uh, Byzantine monasteries. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, and there are also very pictures, little villages up in the mountains. Uh, so uh, these are, uh, uh, there are nice, uh, uh, there is uh, the archaeological museum in Nicosia, there is the Byzantine museum, there is uh, the Levendio gallery. There are lots of things, there are monuments, uh, Roman uh, monuments, uh, forts, uh, so there's, uh, there's a lot to visit and to see. What would you recommend uh, to Cypriots to visit? In Serbia? Or to not miss if, when they come to Serbia? Well, uh, you know, there are so many things. Uh, it depends on how much time they have and how mobile mm -hmm. they are. Uh, of course, Belgrade, uh, it's, it's a lovely city, very lively city with a great nightlife and everything. But most Cypriots come in Serbia to visit the monasteries. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and visit the country uh, just because, as I said, Serbia is very close to Cypriot hearts, so they come for that. And then during winter, there are a lot of Cypriots who come for hunting in Serbia. For hunting? Yeah, because That's here, interesting. yes, yeah. because here they have big hunting, mm -hmm. a big game, yeah. uh, which we do not have in Cyprus. So mm -hmm. there are people who specifically come to hunt. Well, yeah, hunting tourism, that's yes. uh, uh, something that uh, still is in progress, uh, yeah. to, to become, but uh, that's very interesting, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For hunting. Yes. Uh, um, in the Cyprus, uh, of course, you have winter. Mm -hmm. It's not that cold as mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
do you like um, our winters? Do you do? You, uh, did you get used to our very cold and windy winters? Yes. Well, you know, I also served in Moscow. Oh yeah. Well. So uh, <laughs> yeah. after uh, living for three years, uh, going through three Russian winters, yeah. <laughs> uh, Serbian winter, it's uh, it's nothing too too serious. And especially nowadays, because I remember when I was here 25 years ago, winter was much harsher and we had snow for two, three months. Now we barely have snow and temperature, especially this winter, yes, yeah, we yeah. didn't feel it at all. Yes, that's uh, true. So of course, winters, Serbian winters are harsher than Cypriot ones, but I have no problem with them. It's uh, <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah, you already have experience. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> so absolutely. Now here is milk and honey. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> what are uh, our country's uh, relationship in uh, diplomatic, in economy, in tourism? Well, as I said, politically, uh, diplomatically, Cyprus and Serbia are two very close countries. We have. Uh, uh, historically and traditionally excellent bilateral relations. We never had any problems uh, in our relations. We never had any open questions. And um, of course, there are uh, um, trade relations. Of course, trade, uh, well, I, have, I don't have the latest figures, but uh, in 2017, bilateral trade was in total around 20 million euros. I suppose by now it's a bit more. But there are ample margins uh, to increase that. Uh, and uh, so uh, we hope that um, Serbian uh, businessmen and Cypriot businessmen will show uh, uh, a more active interest in doing business or investing in, uh, in either country. And um, so uh, that's one of the fields where there's, uh, there's ample uh, room for improvement. Is there some uh, kind of, uh, mm, not a festival, but uh, some kind of uh, organizations, uh, either economy of tourism that um, embassy uh, are um, planning, are doing here in Serbia? Well, uh, <coughs> we organized uh, three years ago uh, uh, a night, a Cypriot, Cyprus night in, mm -hmm. in a hotel here in, in Belgrade, where uh, a Cypriot chef came to, to Belgrade and he brought Cypriot food, etc. And also a folklore dancing group came mm -hmm. and we invited a lot of uh, travel agents and tour operators and also government officials, both uh, national and uh, Belgrade level, uh, involved in tourism, to promote Cyprus and the exchanges. And then uh, we, um, and also when I travel and I visit uh, various municipalities, we also try to see how we could get uh, at the local level mm -hmm. Uh, various municipalities to to get in contact with Cypriot ones to make either uh, uh, cooperation either in trade, investment, cultural events, promotions uh, or twinning uh, plans. Uh, we had some success but still uh, we hope that in the future uh, there will be more interest and more events uh, of this kind. Is it, uh, is it actually do you think it's expensive to go to, I mean, flights and if it would be maybe a bit cheaper, it will be maybe easier? Well, you know, it's uh, okay, since we are an island, you have to, to fly to go to Cyprus. But from what I see uh, when I see some travel agents, etc., there are very interesting packages mm -hmm. uh, whereby for, let's say, 600 euros or 500 euros, you can go all inclusive, all inclusive. To, Cy mm -hmm. to Cyprus in a three or four star hotel, which is a very good price uh, yes. when you think that you can go spend seven nights or six nights. It's, it's, a, very good, uh, it's a very good price. Yes, yes. So it, that, that means that uh, we need a bit more of promotion. So it's quite a good price. 
Yes, and uh, you know, we, we try, and also travel agents uh, try to get uh, Serbian travel agents to have, to include packages to Cyprus uh, in a more general way. And also we try that from, uh, uh, in Cyprus, from travel agents and tour operators to include Serbia. Uh, things are progressing, but still, you know, uh, at the end of the day, people uh, see how much they're going to co their holiday is going to cost, and it's up to them to decide. Of course, we we try to to promote and to uh, we would like m more Serbs to to visit Cyprus, especially having in mind that they go to a very friendly country. Yes. When you go to Cyprus and you say that you are a Serb. You are welcomed like like a Cypriot, like yeah. really like a brother. So people feel like really like their homes, the same way like Cypriots here. Yeah. So we try to to get things improved, and but it's a slow process. Yeah. We, so we need uh, somehow uh, to to go there first time, and that's it. Absolutely. After after that, you fall in love with yes. it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now after this. Um, situation with uh, COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how did you spend your, your time? Were you here or you went back to, to Cyprus? No, I was in Belgrade. Mm -hmm. I was locked down in, in the residence and um, I was lucky, na lucky enough because we have a big garden, a big yeah. yard, so I, I could uh, walk around in the garden and <laughs> exercise a bit. Uh, but otherwise, uh, being locked down uh, and uh, it's not as human beings is not what is our nature. Yes. So it was uh, it was not an easy uh, period. But as I said, uh, I don't complain. Uh, I consider myself uh, privileged to have to be to have been locked down in a place like this, like rather than in a small apartment that uh, where it's much more difficult and uh, from all points of view. How will it affect uh, uh, this pandemic on the uh, tourism industry in, uh, in uh, Cyprus? Uh, you know, well, of course, as you know, Cyprus is, uh, is a world-class tourism de destination and as with all countries, uh, that has affected us very, uh, very seriously. And uh, now we are actually in the second phase of opening up our borders. Uh, flights have resumed to Cyprus, but countries have been divided in three categories according to their uh, epidemiological situation. So we have countries A, B and C. For the time being, Serbia is in category C. Mm -hmm. But this list will be updated on a regular basis. And then the industry, the tourism industry hotels are opening now. Mm -hmm. And uh, all measures to keep the incoming tourists uh, safe uh, and to also feel safe, but also uh, in substance and, uh, and uh, psychologically uh, will be taken. But in any case, uh, we don't expect that uh, we will have the tourist season that we had last year when we had 4 million yes. uh, foreign tourists. Yes. But we hope that uh, despite that, we will have uh, a sufficient amount of tourists arriving. Like with everybody, every other country uh, uh, in similar situations. Yes, of course. Uh, <clears throat> how do you see our country's relationships in the future? Well, I see them improving and getting stronger and stronger. Great. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, and uh, for the end of the show, I would like to ask one question. Mm -hmm. If uh, someone today told you that you are the one who will choose on the future of the whole world, mm -hmm. what the world will look from your point of view, from your angle? Well, that's, as I said, that's a very difficult question, but I would say a world without war, without conflict, without suffering, uh, uh, less, uh, less unequal in terms of uh, revenues and uh, wealth, and a greener one, and uh, a healthier one. Great. 
Thank you. We hope that it will be like you said. <laughs> of course, we all do. We all do. Thank you very much. You Thank you very much for being our guest. You're, well, you're most welcome. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Dear viewers, Thank you for watching and see you in next World from Another Angle. Χαιρετίζω τα στοιχεία να όνα από την πρεσβεία της Κυπριακής Δημοκρατίας στο Βελιγράδι. Χαιρετίζω τα στοιχεία.